Welcome to whatever this show is going to end up being named. I actually don't know. This is the um, the pilot episode of um, something that may or may not have future episodes. Uh, but by the time this is posted, if it is posted, hopefully at the very least I will have titled it something clever. Uh, I am Alex, and I clearly have no idea what it is that I'm doing. Um, this is going to be an art slash painting video cast. Uh, I'm going to digitally paint stuff, uh, you probably with uh, Art Rage, nice little piece of software here. Uh, whoops, sorry, that was a peek behind the curtain. Um, I meant to say this right here, Art Rage uh, 4.59. Uh, I have the 64-bit edition. I don't really know if it matters. It really depends on what your um, computer's architecture is, but um, here are all the wonderful people apparently that made this program uh, possible. Uh, it's a nice little piece of software that essentially tries to mimic the way um, physical media work on uh, physical canvas. So uh, at the moment I'm sort of using the uh, the paintbrush, uh, this is the sort of the oil painting tool. You can ha kind of mess around with it to choose the um, the shape of the brush to a certain extent, the rotation, stiff, well, you know, you can see this whole sort of toolbar over here. Uh, as we go, uh, I will uh, explain a little bit more of how it works, but ultimately, this is not really an instructional uh, video uh, cast, whatever you call it. Um, even though there may be some instructive elements to it. I do have a degree in this, but how much that degree is worth is up for debate, and uh, whether or not I'm qualified to instruct in any way, shape, or form is 100% up for debate. Um, really, it's uh, more of an exercise in uh, simply getting things done letting go of perfection, um, painting for the fun of it, uh, to a certain extent, uh, a skill that I myself have lost over the years and I'm trying to regain. So it's not like I'm going to be trying to teach you how to do that. You, For all I know, you're better at it than I am. Um, but um, it's about making something and accepting that it's not going to be perfect. That's what this show is about, if anything. Accepting that having made an imperfect object is better than having obsessed in your head uh, for hours or days or weeks or years over some perfect vision that you simply are not ready to realize. So. In keeping with this theme, you might have noticed that this uh, video cast, uh, this show, sounds pretty terrible. I would like to kind of make a disclaimer about that. If you care about perfect sound, this is probably not going to be the show for you. First of all, my voice, you know, it's not the most beautiful, melodious, dulcet voice in the universe. Uh, second of all, uh, my uh, audiovisual skills leave a lot to be desired. Um, it's not my forte, and I'm having a lot of trouble with with that right now. I have to. Um, I have a very nice microphone. I have a a uh, Yeti, a blue Yeti. Um, you know, wonderful piece of technology. Picks up everything. Picks up the fan noise, picks up the pipes running through the walls, um, picks up the ambient noise of the universe. Um, you can sort of hear the twinkling of stars when you turn it on, uh, which is wonderful, uh, but 
not especially helpful when I'm trying to create um, a video where the sound of my voice is going to be sort of a major component. Uh, it really just doesn't work amazingly well um, without a lot of extra stuff. I need a boom, I need a... Um, what are those things called? A pop filter. Uh, and I need to do all kinds of adjustment and all kinds of purchasing, all kinds of stuff to get the, to get it all working the way I would like it to work. And um, since this show is about letting go of perfectionist tendencies, and since um, uh, the premise uh, of the show is about, well, embracing imperfection, I just sort of did it just there, didn't I? Um, I decided that I was just going to go for it. That's what it's all about. So now I'm using the uh, rather inferior microphone that is attached to a uh, sort of a headset that I have owned for many, many years. It's a very old headset that uh, has seen a lot of use and has frayed uh, at the edges quite a bit. Uh, what it does that the Yeti doesn't do is sort of minimize, although you can still very much hear it, sort of minimize the uh, intense fan noise so sound. Uh, and um, at the moment, that's kind of the priority. Uh, that sound has been a thorn in my side for a very long time. So let's just pretend that it's maybe, um, maybe it is the ambient noise of the universe, what you can hear of it, uh, or the sound of the surf, or the ocean, or whatever pleasant fantasy you like. Or, again, um, you might just move on to something more exciting and more interesting, and someone who has better um, uh, knowledge of this kind of stuff. If there's more interest, if, if um, people are watching this, uh, if people are complaining about it, um, and um, some of that interest potentially translates to some support, to some support uh, I may be able to improve uh, the audio as it goes. Uh, but as it stands, let's just all accept the various things that are going to be happening. Uh, you will be hearing every um, every uh, every uh, sort of filler word, every like that I say. I will not be able to edit those out. You will hear my breath. I will be mic breathing. I will be mic sighing, uh, depending on the mood that I'm in at the time. Uh, and um, you will be continually hearing that fan noise in the background. Uh, you know the sighing and the breathing. Maybe there's maybe those are S A A S M R triggers for you. Who knows? That's not my. That wasn't my original intention in creating this uh, series. But who in the world knows, right? So you know, might be a happy accident right there. Uh, in any case, just wanted to make that disclaimer. That's going to happen. Those things are going to be part of this experience. Uh, my voice is not going to sound amazing. Um, the good lord, and I'm not religious, but <laughs> the universal source, the power, whatever, uh, accidental genetic um, incident uh, did not give me a beautiful voice. Um, so that also is a thing. Um, but um, I can paint to a certain extent, and sometimes I forget that. And sometimes I feel like everything I do has to be perfect. Everything I make has to be perfect before I can uh, show it to people, before I can uh, respect it as a work, uh, respect the effort put into it. Uh, and that's simply untrue, and that way things do not really tend to get done as much as um, if you simply work. Um, work begets more work, as they say. So that's the idea. So we're going to, um, I guess, get right into it. Uh, at the beginning of each episode, I'm probably, as you have seen, I've been sort of doing something on the canvas this entire time, something very strange and weird and morphic. Um, 
at the beginning of the show, I'm probably going to start off if I have, you know, check-ins or just something to talk about uh, with a little bit of a warm-up, uh, just a sort of doodle. This is what uh, what this essentially is. It's, um, it is a, a digital doodle. Uh, it doesn't really uh, have intention behind it. It's simply sort of a free-flowing expression. It's forms. It's um, playing with the medium which is a very strange medium indeed. The digital painting is not quite like real life painting even uh, when it tries to be, which is what Art Rage is so sort of for. Um, so it's just kind of uh, some a, a way to get things started. This is not going to be our main uh, work for the day, but it uh, it's just going to be a way for for me to be able to kind of freely channel myself for a little while. But again, letting go of perfection. Let's let's get start on something a little bit more directed. Um, okay, I'm not going to save this, and I'm going to keep the same settings. Um, this is roughly my screen size. My screen size is 1600 by 900 pixels. Um, I'm going to use the um, just the basic canvas, which is already set here, and um, that'll be that'll be it for now. Um, okay, so I'm gonna scale it back so I can see the entirety of the canvas on the screen. And again, this is not intended to be something that I hang up necessarily, although who knows? It's not intended to be something that's sort of perfect. It's just intended to um, to kind of shake things up and loosen things up. So um, today what I thought we might do is uh, s sort of a kind of a traditional theme, I suppose. Let's just do a little bit of a landscape. Um, who knows, maybe it'll be a little bit spooky or something, because uh, Halloween had come and gone and I sort of failed to celebrate it as usual. Or maybe it's, well, you know what, we'll see. We'll see what emerges. So what I just did, basically just, I like to tone things, I like to work on a color. And I think what, what um, Art Rage does a lot of the time is it actually... Um, tries to emulate the way oil paint moves and interacts with itself. It doesn't always do a perfect job of it, and I think that's, <laughs> that's again, that works with our theme. Um, so maybe, maybe a happy little seascape, right? Um, and well, again, that's, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Bob Ross, obviously. Uh, you know, his, his, his work, I think, uh, it's just, an, an, it's given the world just so much, so much amazing stuff. It's, um, it's very fun, it's very popular to make fun of, uh, people like, uh, Bob Ross or Thomas Kincaid, um, very different, uh, people actually, very different, uh, philosophies and, um, uh, kind of viewpoints and purposes behind those works, uh, but they kind of get lumped together. It's very fashionable to make fun of them as an art school student, um, because you know it's not quote unquote high art. You know, it's not Goya, I suppose. And who knows? Uh, maybe we'll we'll add a little touch of Goya to this because I love I love me some Goya. But uh, but they, especially Bob Ross, he did great work um, because he gave people confidence, he gave people peace, and I, I kind of want to channel, channel some of that a little bit. Uh, I just love turning one of those videos on and just kind of zoning out a little bit. Um, and again, my technique is very, very different from either one of those two people, definitely uh, from Thomas Kincaid. Um, and even he, you know, here's the thing, like, being an artist, in today's, um, well, actually pretty much in any, in any day and age, but especially today, uh, is not not easy. It's not a calling to be taken lightly. Um, when I was at art school, I um, 
heard a couple of people mentioning that art was a rich man's hobby. Well, it's a rich man's hobby, but it is a poor man's job, unfortunately. Or poor woman, poor persons. That's just the uh, phrasing that that particular uh, individual used. They said rich man's hobby. Um, rich person's hobby, I suppose, would be more uh, appropriate. Um, but if it is something that you're called to, unfortunately, you're not. Uh, you're not going to uh, to do uh, amazingly well right away, and maybe not ever. And that's something again, something that we uh, may need to accept. Um, and Thomas Kincaid found a way, found a market to uh, make not just a little bit, but make a very, very comfortable living, <laughs> very comfortable living uh, from his work. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, feed his family, uh, secure something for his, uh, for his children. Uh, it, that's something to be admired to a certain extent. Yes, it's, you know, um, there's religious overtones to it that I personally am not uh, interested in. The visuals themselves, you, you could consider that maybe they're a little bit, um, I guess, I don't know, trite or... Um, but you know what, again, they, that there's a market for them and it gives people joy and um you know it brings people pleasure if you're not into it which i'm not 100 i'm not i'm not myself uh if you're not really into it that's totally okay but there are people out there who are who who are, you know who find some kind of enjoyment in um in that sort of work um it gives them a little oasis maybe in their kitchen or bathroom or wherever that they can kind of escape to, uh, and uh, maybe it's inspirational for them spiritually or religion religiously as well. Uh, and you know, who am I to bes besmirch that? You know, um, it's it's very. Um, and again, I don't know what kind of person uh, he was. I don't know what kind of person either one of these men were. Um, but you know that's that particular thing there's something to be admired there there's something to be respected uh even if you don't particularly like the work uh, you know goya is one of my uh favorite uh, artists one of my influences um and you know he also did quite well for himself professionally in his especially in his early um career as a um court painter when he did uh, frilly paintings of uh, lords and ladies and dogs, very cute, <laughs> um, and uh, you know, didn't necessarily end in the happiest ways, especially after having gone blind. But he kept working till the very end, and um, you know, I think his uh, his work is very, very resonant, uh, very powerful, and you know, is considered to be high art. And we're probably not going to aspire to that either. <laughs> we're just gonna, we're just gonna make what we can. Um, so again, I'm starting up, and you probably have been watching. If you have been watching, um, my strokes. None of this is final. That's the thing to remember. Um, and uh, the way I tend to work is kind of very. It's messy. You know, I make a lot of mistakes. I make. I have a lot of happy accidents um there's really um no other way to put it i often mess up and uh part of this whole exercise is you know sort of therapy for me you know uh for me to be able to accept that to accept that that's going to happen um and maybe if there are listeners or watchers out there you know maybe it'll help you uh, do the same because these aren't necessarily going to be beautiful impressive images uh, they may end up just big jumbled messes they may end up um, just you know giant <laughs> mistakes and that's okay um, that's absolutely 100% okay. That's what we're learning to embrace. Because every single time you mess up, you uh, learn something. It's not necessarily what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Because, you know, sometimes what doesn't kill you leaves you 
you know, maimed and crippled. <laughs> but it's it's a matter of simply, um, you know, in a safe kind of space because making art, um, when it becomes a profession or when it becomes a vocation, it can be easy to sort of uh, become stressed about it, to become bothered by it, uh, to turn it into a chore, and um, ultimately you don't get executed if you make a terrible painting um, or if you make by your own personal high standards a terrible painting um, you don't um, end up dead you don't end up injured um, you simply um, move on you make another one and the other one might be better and the one after that might be a little better yet anyways um, I've been sort of mocking things up with a relatively large brush. Now this can, like, one of the, I think, disadvantages of, of digital painting is that you kind of locked into whatever the software, um, uh, whatever the limitations of the software are. And in this particular case, I can get the, the brush up to a hundred, but that's, you know, about that size. I'm going to just get rid of that stroke with the magic of digital, um, uh, art, right? Just uh, control Z. <laughs> but just as a demonstration, I'm going in with a very, very big brush, but this is about as big as it's going to get. And using a Wacom tablet, it allows me to vary that size based on pressure. Um, but, you know, it, I still I can't just go and grab, as I would be able to in real life, you know, grab a large, like, house painting brush and just, you know, slap some stuff around to build a base or to create texture, I kind of have to deal with a very, very virtual uh, canvas, a very, very virtual space. Um, in case you don't know, uh, the actual world within a painting is called the virtual space. That's kind of where, uh, well, maybe that's not where that, that idea of virtual reality comes from, but uh, that's uh, one of the... Um, older uses of the word virtual in relation to sort of imagery, right? Uh, it is a space, like the virtual space of the canvas. It's the space that's created by the artist. Um, and when we're dealing with digital uh, painting, uh, the space sort of becomes very virtual. There's no physicality to it. And that's kind of where the um, the attempt by programs like Art Rage to emulate real life uh, painting kind of fall a little bit flat, and you kind of have to deal with that because you don't necessarily have the same uh, level of interaction. You know, it tries to mim to mimic the way that that colors sort of mix together, but it's not um, it's not the same thing. And um, hmm. Let's see, I'm just gonna see what, if I can kind of turn this into, you know what? Let's, let, 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 I'm just gonna mock this up. That's not the best color to do that in at all. I should probably have gotten started off with with darker color, but um, again, I'm not, great, <laughs> I'm not great at this. I do have a BFA, but I do not have an MFA, so, and I'm, I never intend to get one. So, um, you know, bear with me. Um, what was that? Go oh yeah, digital painting. That's what I was going on about. <laughs> so you kind of have to, whatever medium you're working in, maybe it's painting, maybe it's sculpture, maybe you're, you know, uh, crafting uh, humanoid figures out of clay. Maybe you're doing digital, uh, you know, 3D modeling. Whatever it is, you have to kind of be aware of the quirks um, that come along with your uh, particular medium. And it takes a while to really learn it. I personally have not learned all the quirks of this program yet. Uh, I'm, I, I pick up on more and more of them as time goes on. But this applies to any creative process. You're going to have to mess around with things sometimes. Uh, you can read manuals, of course, so you can watch instructional videos. Those are great, too. That's one of the wonderful things uh, you, that about YouTube. Aside from people... Oh, see, this actually turned out, in my opinion, pretty, pretty well. Um, again, who knows what will happen in the future, but... Um, I'm doing a sort of, um, you know, the style that this seems to be uh, kind of tending towards is kind of expression, oh, sorry, impressionistic. Um, 
so uh, we're not going for photorealism of any kind, but rather sort of the um, idea of mood and light, and that's probably not the best. But I think compositionally, uh, that big form. Yes, you know, whoops, sorry there. That big form in the middle that I kind of threw, I'm not in the middle, on the uh, right side that I'm working on right now, actually works pretty well. It creates a sort of framing for the painting. It's like we're um, kind of a classic uh, technique, really. Um, one, it directs, uh, you know, you can have more of a dynamic motion here. This, you know, we have motion going this way and then motion going that way, so it's, you know, it creates interest that way, and also kind of, you know, more conceptually creates a sort of contained viewpoint, so we kind of get this view of um, this rocky beach or cliffside or whatever it is, well, let's say probably a beach, um, almost like we're kind of peering at it from a secret, an even more secret space, you know? Um, so, you know, I think that uh, whatever, whether the shape of this is perfect or not, I think it actually turned out to be a good decision. Sometimes just sort of go with whatever, uh, if, you're, if you're doing an improvisational painting like this, um, which again is not necessarily always the, the best thing to do for every situation. It's, you know, something that can be very relaxing to do or something that will allow you to um, to sort of work out some ideas or some thoughts. But if you're doing improvisational painting, um, you know, don't be afraid to um, to make mistakes or make bold decisions or what have you. Again, that's something that I think um, was one of the things that I really appreciated in, in, in Bob Ross's work and his uh, instructions. Um, it's, it's something that um, that sort of let, allows you to be free to let go of those preconceived expectations. See, I don't actually know what I'm doing right here. This is complete nonsense, but, you know, well, let's block this off a little bit and then and then we'll come back to it. I think I think we can, you know, kind of get away with this being a relatively flat, dark shape, you know, um, without necessarily massive amounts of definition. I think that might actually make that stronger. And yeah, anyways, just play, you know, I think with, when you're working digitally, you've got to play around with the tool set that you're given, and it's not always, or pretty much just never perfect. Um, or it's not perfectly transparent to you. A lot of people like to use Photoshop, um, for example, for uh, this kind of painting, and I think that's uh, great. Sorry if there was a really unpleasant noise in your microphone just now. That's going to happen. Um, uh, you know, whatever whatever program you use, ArtRage is very particular in that it um, again it, it creates this sort of um, uh, sort of simulation for you of of the way paint works together. So, like for example, oops, see there you go. Like you know, you don't necessarily have the same amount of fine grained control uh, of digital work as you would in physical in the physical realm. Um, it tries to create a simulation. So if I kind of go in here with um, with a gray, you can see kind of sort of if you look closely, you can see the paint kind of moving around and blending in there. Uh, and that's very nice, but it's also not a physical situation. Because it's digital, um, it's going to glitch, there's going to be bugs, there's going to be artifacts, and they may not even be visible on a small, on sort of this scale. Like when you zoom in, you'll actually see that things uh, might appear a little bit different from what you would expect in the real world. Um, you know, so fight against those issues, fight with them, uh, work with them. They will be there, they will be present. Um, they're kind of part of the process. That's my um, view of it. And again, uh, the reason I'm making this is because I'm mostly telling all of this to myself. I myself am not... Um, always the best at that. Perfectionism, perfectionistic tendencies are 
uh, a thing that I have, and because everything I make is going to inevitably be imperfect, um, that particular problem can really lead to a lot of distress and discomfort, especially if you um, kind of went to um, to an art institution, spent lots of time and money and energy on that, um, and are supposed to quote unquote be a real artist, you know, it can really um, bog you down. And it shouldn't. It really shouldn't. Um, that's just kind of contrary to the spirit of the thing. And it's unfortunate because we all have to make a living and, oh, it's time to do some clouds. <laughs> we all have to make a living and it's it's hard, you know. You know, so anyways, I can adjust the um, size here. Again, this is not a tutorial. This is not. Um, I mean, again, it's not. This is not literally the joy of painting. To despite the fact that I kind of aspire to that kind. Of, I clearly aspire to that kind of effect, maybe, um, because there's nothing really intentionally instructional about it. At least not right now. I may go into that in future videos, but. Right now, it's just let's talk and let's paint. Um, it's, uh, you know, the, the thing about this, I think, right now is that I have my thinners and my loader loading uh, at around the same. So if I imp increase the thinners, I'm going to get a little bit more of a, a wispy, um, sort of mixy feeling <laughs> where paint actually uh, tends to kind of interact a little bit more and things are a little kind of, kind of wetter as they say. Um, so I'm just gonna mess around here a little bit just sort of feel out where clouds might be and um, the intention is that this is kind of I guess a very overcast day kind of this is a whole sort of landscape that's very barren very desolate um, maybe um, a little bit sad, but at the same time, I personally like to imagine uh, escaping to places like this, in a sense, in my <laughs> in my fantasies. A lot of the time, this is kind of something that resonates with me um, internally. Um, I don't know why. I don't necessarily know. Um, maybe that's just another maladaptive um, or... <laughs> sort of weird thing about me um, but you know I'm one of those people that likes it, likes it when it rains and um, I like uh, stormy skies or stormy weather and again notice again that we have a slightly kind of wetter feeling to this paint and that's because I upped the thinners in real life that just mean I probably put a little bit more turpentine on the uh, paint uh, or on my brush and um, in, but in real life, things are very different. <laughs> Let's just quote unquote real life, meaning uh, physical painting. That's obviously this is just as real, and it's it is you know however you uh, feel like you want to create. Um, you know that's you know you have that's your prerogative. And in my opinion, uh, digital painting uh, works very well for me. I am still kind of a newbie at it, though. Believe it or not. Um, so uh, again, it's going to be we're going to have a lot of mistakes and a lot of problems, um, and a lot of issues here. But it's um, it's all it's all part of the process. It's all it's all beautiful, you know. And again, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm saying all of that to myself. I as as I do this, I'm just like, oh no, these clouds, they look terrible. What am I doing? I don't know where I'm going with that. Where's where's the light coming from? Oh god, I can't. Oh no, you know, oh, just to maybe get a little bit more of more of that light in there. Who knows? Um, but I'm trying more to soothe and calm myself than anyone else at the moment. Um, and again, like, you know, the way that you um, hold the quote-unquote brush, uh, the the speed of your movements can affect the uh, the kind of mark you make, uh, whether or not it's a square head or a round head, because I, I noticed that I've been, I had the square head thing turned on the entire time, creates a very particular mark, you know, maybe a little bit more um, 
conducive to kind of an ex 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 uh, impressionistic, sorry, um, uh, view of things. Um, let me sort of create a sort of haze over here. You know, and I mean, we might not finish this this whole painting by the time um, that the time the time runs out, which I'm not entirely sure when that's going to be. Probably soon. Um, but we'll do our best. Um, I haven't quite um, pinned down or decided how long I want these episodes to be. I haven't pinned down or decided pretty much anything yet. Um, so you're, uh, if you are watching this, uh, you're kind of in the very <laughs> enviable position of um, of being a test audience almost for something that uh, has yet to take um, its proper form. If again, if such is to be, um, if such is to happen at all, um, you know. I feel like when um, you have an idea and you want to, you know, you, you, you want to work on that idea, you're passionate about it, um, planning goes a long way. Planning is important. Planning is useful. I do not want to underplay the importance of planning. And it really depends on the scope of your project. Um, you know, if you're making, uh, let's say, a, um, a, a movie, even a low-budget movie, or a video game, even a low-budget video game, a lot of times you need to do quite a bit more planning, uh, but even even that planning, even the process of planning should, in my opinion, uh, be its own complete creative act, and you should feel free to leap or jump into it. And that's what I'm doing here, because doing something is going to make you feel better than not doing something. That's what my therapist would say, probably, I think. Who knows? I mean, she has. It has been said. <laughs> so, so you know, uh, inactivity will um, tend to make things fester, potentially, and um, ideas can end up being sort of um, more of a burden than a um, than an inspiration if you allow them to fester. Um, there's a really good episode of Radio Lab that uh, I think basically led me to be able to finish my first uh, novel, which is not a good. Again, um, this is not me being self-deprecating, this is just me being realistic right, to a certain extent. I mean, there are a lot of problems with it that I would personally like to fix if I were to ever publish that novel, but I wrote one, right? You know, this wasn't NaNoWriMo, I kind of just decided to write one, and I eventually, and I kind of did. Um, but it was inspired by this Radio Lab episode, and I think it was on, um, ooh, look at that, look what's happening over here, that's what I mean uh, about, like, this is essentially a kind of a, kind of a glitch that we're gonna have to deal with. Um, this really actual real paint wouldn't behave this way. Uh, sometimes it's, well, it's sort of, well, what, what's happening, I guess, is it's sort of wearing down, quote unquote, the thinners are wearing down the underlying uh, layer of paint, or the, the base layer. Um, Anyways, this episode was on Ulysses contracts, which is, you know, when Odysseus, um, was swimming through the sea of the sirens. I forget what the, there is a more official, fancy name for that particular spot of the ocean where the sirens hang out. Um, he was, um, and Ulysses would be the sort of the, I guess the Roman name. Um, he was ext extremely curious to find out what the siren sounded like because, of course, by all accounts, it, the music was beautiful. But he was aware of the fact that if you, um, you know, give in to <laughs> to their wiles, uh, you would, um, you know, you would want to steer the ship towards the noise, and it would eventually crash on the rocks, and then the sirens, being terrifying creatures, uh, would come and eat you, 
uh, tear you apart with their claws and so forth and so on. Uh, so what he did was he uh, made his men um, wear uh, wax or put wax in their ears so they couldn't hear the noise, but he himself, because of his curiosity, um, told them to lash him to the mast. Uh, meaning to tie him up to the mast so and, and leave his ears unplugged. Um, and he also told them that uh, he was aware of the fact that his judgment would be greatly impaired uh, during the uh, siren song, so he told them that no matter how much he begged and no matter what he told them, they would steer the ship away from the noise and not towards it, or from the song. And of course, it worked. and. You know his prediction was true. He did, in fact, beg and plead for them to, to move towards the sound, and they, well, probably didn't even hear him. But anyways, <laughs> the episode of Radio Lab, which is a very nice NPR show, um, which I don't listen to anymore because it's way too depressing. Um, that particular episode of the Radio Lab uh, dealt with Ulysses contracts of different kinds and kind of how they affect us. I think the last segment of that episode was about creativity. And um, and I think they had Elizabeth Gilbert on, who I have a great deal of respect for, just from her appearances on various uh, podcasts and radio shows. She seems like a wonderful lady. I have not read any of her work. She's, uh, I think, notably um, known for Eat, Pray, Love, uh, which is something she did. And she ate and prayed and lo- loved, I guess. I don't, I, um, you know, I don't know the details. She seems like an absolutely... Um, wonderful person, uh, based on what I've seen, uh, but, uh, they had her on, and she was sort of talking about being kind of kind to her muse, and indulge, remembering to, at the very least, indulge, uh, your muse, uh, even if you, if you cannot, or if you're not ready to work on a particular, um, project, you should, uh, nevertheless give it the full respect, like, almost treat it as a, as a being, as a spirit, you know, however uh, strange that sounds, uh, and however kooky. Um, so, um, you know, that kind of led me to, uh, I was sort of in, in a very torpid period of my life at the time. I really wasn't uh, sure what to do, just as I am maybe now, um, or where to go. Uh, and I really kind of wanted to write a book, but I, um, you know, if you've ever tried to go there, you know that how easy it is to make excuses, you know, uh, inspiration is just not striking, blah, 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 and I think that really, really helped me um, kind of put things in perspective. There was a really good story, I think she was the one who told it. Uh, she interviewed Tom Waits, who is also fantastic in my opinion, I'm a big Tom Waits fan, um, and uh, he was talking about um, sort of when he was riding on the, um, driving on the uh, Los Angeles freeway, which I suppose is a very unpleasant experience. I've never been there. Uh, and he saw the most beautiful sunset, or, no, sun, I guess sunrise, one of those two. So the sun gets all red and whatever. Um, and the, the um, inspiration for one of his songs sort of started flooding on him, but he had no paper, uh, no pencils, no tools to write it down, and he was in the middle of driving, even if he was in traffic. And uh, he kind of had to talk to his um, muse at the time and say, like, hey, we're going to deal with this, but um, but could you please come back later? Because can't you see that I'm busy? Um, if, or, or else go bother Leonard Cohen, which I thought was a very... Was, I thought was that was fun. <laughs> um, because, you know, you, you, Tom Waits, Leonard Cohen, they have similar sounding voices, I guess, maybe. Um... <laughs> So, I, so the point of that, and again, uh, my whole brand is is long, um, uh, sort of long rambles and tangents. The point of that is that um, when you have something that you want to work on, um, do your best to give it respect and give your best to, to address it. Just like, you know, this show, which is inc- incredibly imperfect, and um, at this point, you know, who knows how it's going to turn out. Um, you know, the, the, just like this painting, which is not going to be finished by the time we're done with the show. Maybe we'll continue it in the next episode, I don't know. Um, 
You saw how much filling I did with the clouds. This is not sort of Bob Ross levels of um, fearlessness or, um, you know, boldness, you know, just going into something and just boom, you know, like that kind of technique, like despite the fact that the paintings that they produce may not have been sort of perfect paintings, is really admirable, but, you know, it's not necessarily my forte, it's not something that I can do, like, you know, I can, you know, sometimes you work on something, sometimes you mess it up, and that's, you know, kind of heartbreaking, you know, overworking something, man, you know, something looking good one moment, looking bad the next, um, but in the process of it, you have much more control than in the process of simply thinking about it. That's my view of it. So that's what this first episode is all about. And that's what maybe this whole show is about, I don't know. Um, but this first episode is about making something or making a sort of a start of something that is very, very, very imperfect. And then doing it anyway. <sighs> that's what I tell myself. <laughs> Um, if I have the bravery to post this up, um, then I suppose this philosophy will have borne out and will have borne fruit. If I don't, then who knows? But if you're listening to this, then I, obviously I did. Um, again, these clouds are getting very, very strange and ominous, and they're kind of coming from, seem to be emanating from that central point, which is very odd in and of itself. Uh, maybe there's some sort of dark demon uh, Sauron tower over here, um, where, <laughs> from which the, the Dark Lord um, marshals his forces, right? So maybe, maybe it has, um, it has a little, uh, oh, whoa, digital painting, right? Am I right or am I right? Uh, maybe it has like a, a dark, glowing light that emanates from it and kind of uh, girds the edges of these clouds in its sinister glow. You know, like it's a it's a large and evil uh, pillar <laughs> that where um, from which. Oh, let me let me up the loading here a little bit. When you loading is how much paint you uh, you have on your brush for the folks, those folks who don't um, know. Uh, right. So let's make it dark and scary. Yes. So here we have a happy little wizard's tower. Not super happy. Just a wizard's tower that um, you know uh, sort of casts its shadow and its uh, dark sway across this uh, barren landscape. You know, maybe this is the sea, maybe it's the desert, maybe this is Mordor, huh? Who knows? Um, we are the masters of our own destiny, aren't we? And, um, and we can create whatever we like. And sometimes we find little surprises in our paintings. Um, like, you know, the, the dark eye of Sauron, right over there. You know, who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what could happen? Anything is possible. That's the beauty of art, isn't it? <laughs> Alright, um, I'm, I'm going to leave this off here uh, at this very, very imperfect beginning of a painting. Um, and mm, we'll see. Maybe next time we'll start on something completely new. Uh, or maybe next time we will start, uh, or we will just kind of pick up where we left off. Um, that might actually be a little easier for me, kind of for early, um, for the early parts of this quote-unquote program, um, to see where this could go. Could be interesting, could be fun, could be interesting how much we can mess it up and how much we can uh, improve it. Um, Oh, fun. This is fun. <laughs> now we're having fun. Just as I'm about to sign off, now we finally found a an, um, an amazing direction to take this. Maybe put a, little, a couple of happy little orcs over here that, you know, maybe uh, are kneeling in some kind of s supplication to the, <laughs> to the Dark Lord's um, 
uh, sway upon them. Uh, maybe um, maybe a couple of evil fortresses over here, happy little evil fortresses. Uh, maybe not. Maybe this will be gone by next time and we'll be back to uh, moody seascape without any fantastic elements. Um, who in the world knows? Uh, but <laughs> it's just started having a little bit of fun uh, with this uh, as we signed off, as we're about to sign off. Um, well, we'll see. Um, I might come back to this particular, I'm going to save this particular painting, I might come back to it later and see how it uh, goes. Um, let me maybe put it into full screen very briefly. Um, workbench mode, well, close to full screen, don't really, um, you know, don't really need to get that much closer to it because it's not going to be flattering. Uh, you know what? You know what? Um, in the interest of our philosophy, let's get close to it. Let's really see the glitches and the weirdness and <laughs> and the way that this differs from physical painting. The way that these pixels are in fact uh, artifacts uh, of this process. The same way that um, you know the the actual strokes of paint. Uh, would be on a physical canvas and you can see that it's emulating the strokes of paint like if you zoom out a little bit more you can see the strokes um, if you zoom out very far you can see the beginnings of an image you zoom in very 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 close you see pixels it's beautiful it's wonderful um, I, I you know this is a great way for me to um, to get back into painting a little bit more often um, if you have uh, stayed with me for this long, I well, I guess I appreciate it. Uh, maybe you were hate watching this, uh, and that's you know okay too. Uh, everything's fine, um, but uh, you know, I really do appreciate anyone who has been able to sit through this um, probably slightly tedious process and to deal with all of my uh, audio issues, which will continue to be a problem going forward for as long as I can foresee. Probably the next 10 episodes or 20 or 3, if I only make 3, we'll find out. Uh, it's all very beautiful. I'm in a, I'm in a good mood right now. Um, so I'm going to sign off. I'm going to wish you all the best. I haven't come up with a nice little sign-off phrase yet, so that's fine too. Um, it's all part of it. Um, I hope you enjoyed. If not, that's fine too. But um, have a good morning, evening, afternoon, the deep night, whatever, wherever, etc. Uh, and I guess hopefully I'll see you next time. <laughs>